What's up everyone? Today I'm showing you how to write a reaction paper, also known as a response paper or a reader response essay, step by step using a real essay example. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe and tap the bell to stay updated whenever I post a new writing tutorial. Let's get started. The purpose of this type of essay is to describe your response to an article, book, movie, song, or any other work using thoughtful analysis. There are a couple of types of different reactions that you could write about in your essay. For example, you could say overall, I agree or disagree with the author's main argument because, or this piece was surprising, refreshingly honest, relatable, etc. The author failed to consider the text was original or unoriginal because the writing style of the text was conversational, lush, confusing, etc. Or the text accurately or inaccurately represents a person, group, experience, etc. Our sample essay topic for our essay example will be a reaction paper to Nicholas Carr's essay in The Atlantic, Is Google Making Us Stupid? So I've put a link in the description box below to this article. I suggest you take a look at it and read it before diving into writing this essay. In summary, this article explains that the internet or Google may decrease our attention spans overall or may prevent us from truly thinking deeply. For our introductory paragraph, we'll first want to provide an interesting hook. So an example of a hook could be an anecdote, and I could talk about my personal experience researching a specific topic, such as The Tonight Show, on Google and starting to read related articles. And in this research process, I learned so much about the evolution of late night comedy that I decided to create a video about it. With the power of the web, I discovered a new interest and exercised my creativity. So you can see from this anecdote that I'm discussing my personal experience to draw the reader in, but I'm also hinting that I have a positive outlook on Google or the internet in general, which will lead nicely into my thesis later on. So after the hook, you'll want to briefly summarize the text. We could write, in his essay, Nicholas Carr argues that the internet has turned society into passive, inattentive consumers who search for the shortest and most digestible digital content. And I would try to keep that summary to a minimum, maybe one to two sentences, because remember, we're writing a reaction paper and our point is not to summarize the text throughout the essay. Lastly, for this paragraph, we'll include our thesis statement, which will discuss our defensible opinion. Here's our thesis. While Carr describes valid concerns about internet users' inability to concentrate for long periods of time, he understates the fact that this accessible information source has empowered the global community. So, I'm acknowledging in this thesis that the author of the article raises some valid points that definitely have some merit, but my opinion differs from his because I believe that the internet overall has a positive impact on society. So you'll also want to provide your own opinion or your own reaction based on those different types of reactions we talked about before. There are a couple of do's and don'ts you need to know before writing your body paragraphs. You definitely do want to interact with the text and offer commentary by responding to quotes that are woven into your essay or paraphrased evidence that is included from the piece. You'll also want to integrate outside evidence in if applicable. And that outside evidence could be literary criticisms, expert opinions, anecdotes and images, analogies, statistics and facts, information on the author's background, or any other external pieces of evidence that could bolster your opinion and your reaction to the text or the work that you're talking about. 
You'll also want to create a logical flow from one paragraph to the next using transitions. You don't want to write an argumentative or persuasive essay since this is still a reaction paper. You don't want to summarize the piece and we also do not want to misinterpret the author's words so it's important to read the author's text a couple of times before diving into our own essay. Now let's write our body paragraphs. The first body paragraph will critique the text's negative portrayal of the internet, the second will explain the internet's benefits to the global community, and the third will evaluate the text's concerns about the future. We'll use a similar structure across all three paragraphs in which we will first extract evidence, whether that's direct quotes or paraphrased material, from the text, and then respond to that evidence. Here's a quote in the first body paragraph that we're going to discuss. My mind now expects to take in information the way the net distributes it, in a swiftly moving stream of particles. Once I was a scuba diver in the sea of words. Now I zip along the surface like a guy on a jet ski. My reaction is, the author places the blame solely on the internet and not on his own reading habits. Carr's analogy proves that it is his job as a writer to peruse and analyze texts, but people in other professions do not have the time to do the same. So my opinion is that the author is ignoring the convenience that the internet offers to individuals in other professions. Let's take a look at the second body paragraph, where I've included another quote taken directly from the text. I can't read War and Peace anymore, he... Bruce Friedman admitted, I've lost the ability to do that. Even a blog post of more than three or four paragraphs is too much to absorb. I skim it. So in this quote, an individual is describing the fact that he cannot read the infamously long book, War and Peace, anymore because he's gotten so used to reading short texts on the internet. But my response is that the internet can actually help individuals, especially students, understand these long texts and these pieces of literature that are often not easy to understand. So students can supplement their reading with information from online study guides and literary forums. Obviously, material from the internet cannot replace literature itself, but it can definitely help enhance students' understanding. And I'm going to continue using the structure throughout all three body paragraphs. I highly suggest you check out this whole outline and read through it. Feel free to ask any questions about this outline in the comments section below. In our concluding paragraph, we'll first reiterate the thesis statement by saying, the internet's benefits outweigh the potentially negative implications of excessive internet usage. We'll next provide a holistic opinion of the piece or an overall opinion. So I could write that it may be true that the internet is impairing humans' ability to think deeply and critically, but the internet has also made information more accessible to all. The pursuit of knowledge is no longer reserved for those living in an ivory tower. And when I say an ivory tower, I mean a theoretical, secluded, academic place where you don't have to really interact with the outside world. And we'll want to end by offering an insight, food for thought, or a question. My food for thought at the end is the fact that students need digital literacy training to learn how to use search engines responsibly and avoid power browsing or that type of browsing where you skim articles and jump from one post to the next. In the comments below, let me know what article or work you're reacting to in your reaction paper. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and tap the bell to receive notifications whenever I make a new video. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments as well.